Uh, you, you know, you, you talk a lot about um, your teachers um, and your mentors. And I have to admit, um, you know, I, I play the bassoon. So, you know, I'm very familiar with what a, a music lesson is. But what is a composition lesson like? It's very different because there's no, it's not like there's one way to compose. Uh, unlike, I mean, I guess there's not one way to play an instrument either, but it's a bit more clear. So usually my teacher would just give me um, suggestions and usually his suggestions are, are, are good and they make sense musically. I mean, obviously you can, you can kind of do whatever you want in composition, but you have to have um, a good reason for doing it. Sure. And I, he's okay with me experimenting and doing whatever as long as I have a good basis for doing that. Yeah, as long as it's as long as it's thought out. And I actually wanted to um, sort of explore that word composer or or composition with you, um, because I know um, you know improvisation is something that uh, you've explored and and, and something that you uh, experiment with um, as a performer uh, and someone who writes music. I mean, is is an improvisation something that you also consider a composition? But I've heard it be called spontaneous composition. And, oh, sure. And yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. I think, I mean, there's, there's a lot of thought that goes into it. And in the end, some of the improvisations I've heard sound no different than notated compositions. Yeah, help us understand um, that idea of a lot going into an improvisation, because I'm sure many people would just consider it random playing, so-called random playing. But it's so much more than that, I'm sure. There are many different types of improvisation, and some of the pieces are um, pretty complex because they have they combine improvised sections with notated sections, and you you can't really you can't really tell where one begins and one ends. You, you could improvise in some sort of system, like I guess in earlier jazz you'd be improvising in some kind of key or or progression, and then Later on, you might be improvising over like shapes <laughs> that you see or you know, some type of articulation. You might be focusing on that. There's always this like intuitive thing you, you feel when you're hearing it that you know it, it make there's some type of logic to it, that it's not random. It, it's, it's hard to describe how you, how you feel that when you're hearing it. But you just know that you hear it when you're hearing it, or you know that you you're feeling it when you feel it. Yeah, you just know it's not it's not random. Why did you choose the um, title of dialogue? Is it do, do you see it as a sort of musical conversation between cello and piano? Yeah, definitely. I didn't pick the title until after I was done with the piece. So once I was finished, I, I realized that the cello and piano kind of have two different personalities and they yeah. keep they keep exchanging roles throughout the piece like the the piano is kind of flowing and mostly quiet and the cello is kind of ag aggressive the piano tries to keep um moving on but the cello keeps like kind of interrupting it but there's there's kind of a resolution in the end it's not the most aggressive like resolution yeah the piece kind of just ends all of a sudden and I mean I suppose the dialogue is left open. Who are some of the composers that um, have inspired you? I mean are, are they uh, among them or, or is it completely fresh for you? I like Ligeti a lot. Ligeti, okay. And he's, he's one of my favorite composers because um, the music sounds, the music is might be like dissonant and aggressive but there's still a sense of humor to it that that I can sense with the like crazy rhythms I guess it's not too fun for the players but <laughs> it's fun for a listener we began our conversation by talking about um you know COVID and, and protests and this very uh different world uh that we're all living in um do you see yourself uh, do you see yourself as a composer the music you write um, evolving or, or being different in response to this new reality? 
I don't know if there's been a big change in my music because of the new reality, but I do feel that there's there's kind of a responsibility to to respond to it in in some shape or form. But by nature, I don't like to involve myself in things where I'm not when I don't know enough about the like enough about the circumstances or I'm not like connected with it. Sure. But you've, but you've, uh, but even so you've acknowledged that, you know, you feel the need, this responsibility to respond in, in some way. I mean, what, what might that response look like for you? Is it more chamber music? Is it more orchestral music? What, what do you, what do you foresee in the future? I like chamber music. That's, that's my favorite type of music to write. So why is chamber music your favorite? Well, well, it's more it's more intimate, and I have a greater connection with it because, and, and then when I'm rehearsing the piece, there's it's not like there's a hundred hundred players I have to speak to. <laughs> are there are there any um, questions that um, you feel like I didn't cover, or or anything that you want to you know tell the world uh, <laughs> with this opportunity? Well, I guess I'll say. Uh, Thanks for the opportunity. Um, th this has been, it's been pretty fun so far because I, I've met, uh, I've never met so many people that like the composers I like in, in one room before. So that's pretty, that's pretty exciting. It sounds like Next Notes has connected you to folks that you have a lot in common with. Yes, thank you for, thank you for completing my sentence. <laughs> yeah.